So this is yourself series. And if you remember, if you were awake last Sunday or here, uh, what did we preach last Sunday? What was the sermon last year? What about yourself? What do you do yourself? Love yourself. Love yourself. Don't know how many we're going to be in this series, but at least two last week and this week. And at least one more, uh, a third one next week. Yourself series. Love yourself. And uh, as you remember, and I just got a couple of slides, and this is what it means. You can love yourself, but you can do it wrongly, or you can do it correctly. And the correct way is to think about yourself the way God thinks. It's not about being in love with yourself. Mm-hmm. To love yourself is not being in love with yourself. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. If you're in love with yourself, you just think you're mm, the best thing on earth. You know, you just think more highly than you ought to think about yourself. No, this is thinking what God thinks about yourself. Having the thoughts and the opinions that God has about you, that's what you have about you. I mean, you know, he thinks good about you. I mean, he formed you, he made you, he created you, he shed his blood for you. He loves you with an everlasting love, just like you are. That's cool, isn't it? That's good. Now, we talked about what you're worth. It didn't, didn't actually show this slide, but I, I want to today. They say that if you take the chemicals that's in your body, the minerals, and invite all of that, and kind of extracted all that, you'd get about $160. Mm. Somebody thought, man, I thought I was worth more than that. Well, see there, you're thinking too much of you. $160. But if you took all the components of your body, you took all the, the bone marrow and, and all each individual organ, and you, you, you sold all of that, and the dentist here, he'll extract your teeth, and maybe some gold in there. Some of them worth more than that, aren't they, Doc? But uh, they, you'd be worth around $45 million. Huh, somebody says, yeah, I knew. Now he's talking about me. Now he's talking about me. Hey, Mr. Garner, good to see Mr. Garner here today. Give Mr. Garner a good hand today. Praise the Lord. What a blessing. Thank you, sir, for coming. But we're not talking about your value that man might place on your life. Amen? We're talking about the value that God, and if your uh, children, most of the children are gone because the next slide is, is it's a, Beautiful slide, but it's kind of gory, because this is how much you're worth. Mm -hmm. That's what God says about you. That's what I'm willing to pay for you, for your soul, for your soul. Don't ever let anybody lie to you and tell you that you're worthless. Mm, that you have no value because Jesus said differently. You're his masterpiece. Amen. Today, it almost seems in opposition to it, but the yourself today is deny yourself. Pastor, I know you, you forgot to take your medicine or something. But one week you tell me to love myself, and now you're telling me to deny yourself. Sounds confusing? Actually, it's the same thing. I submit to you today, to love yourself is to deny yourself. It's the best thing you can ever do for yourself, is to deny yourself. Read with me. Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. What does it mean to deny yourself? Sir? Huh? <laughs> What does it mean to deny yourself? I, do we love ourselves or do we deny it? What's the deal? Okay? To deny yourself is really to deny not your worth and your value, but your will. Amen? Jesus denied his will, not, neither, not my will, but your will be done. So to deny yourself is to disown ownership of your life. Deny ownership. Deny control. This is who I am, and I'm a valuable person. I am of great value because God says so. 
And the best thing you can do with that life is to give it to God. If you really love it and you want the best for it, deny ownership of it and be the manager and the steward and let God take control. I think that's what Lord means, doesn't it? You heard about making Jesus Lord? That's really what we're talking about is the essence of disciple. What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Eli said, yesterday I asked him and just had a little test, you know, Eli, what's it mean to follow Jesus? Why are you going to get baptized? Because I'm going to follow Jesus. What does that mean? Obey him. Mm -hmm. It may mean goosebumps one day. It may mean good, thrilly, thrilling kind of things and maybe up on an emotion like that. But if it all boils down to you're going to obey him or not, that's a follower of Jesus. Somebody that's learning about Jesus, learning his teachings, and doing what he said do. That is a follower of Jesus. That's a disciple. You can come to church every Sunday. You can come to church every week. If you ain't obeying Jesus, you're not following him. Amen? Come on. That's the truth. You're not following him if you're not obeying him. Because he's making it this way. He's saying I'm going this way, and you're going this way. If you're not obeying him, you're not following him. You're not a disciple of Jesus. A learner learns and follows. A learner obeys. This is what I want. What do I want? I want what he wants. I'm going to deny, disown myself in the sense that I don't have control. I don't have control. Sounds contradictory, but actually to love yourself is to deny yourself. Put it in the hands of God. That's freedom right there. Everybody say freedom. freedom. It's through self-denial. To do what's best for you. Caring for yourself. Mentally, physically, and emotionally, and spiritually. We need to take care of ourselves. How are you going to help others if you're not able? Right? So part of loving ourselves is caring for ourselves, doing what's best physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Because you need to be in condition. How are you going to help somebody else if you're broke down? Uh-huh. Your bodies are what? First Corinthians 6, 19, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you are not your own. To deny yourself is to come to that understanding, I'm not my own. Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not I. It's Christ in me who lives. I've disowned myself. Jesus is my Lord, and he is my life. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am not my own. I've denied it. I've disowned myself. I belong, and I'm the property of of Jesus, the landlord. He's, a, he's, a, he's the Lord, amen? But he's Lord over your property, over you. And that's true freedom. Freedom is it's bondage and emptiness to cling to yourself, to own your own life. If you're here today and you want to own your own life, get ready for a life of misery. Get ready for a life of chaos because you don't know what to do with it. You're not capable. Mm -mm. That's why I said to love yourself and say, Lord, look what you've done for me. Look who you are. That's a good decision. Say, Lord, take my life. That is denying yourself. It literally means in the Greek, say adios. To say adios. Adios. Goodbye, Randy. Jesus is on the throne. Everybody do that. Just say, use your name and say goodbye. Okay, one more time. Good, goodbye. Amen. Oh, that's loving yourself. Because that's freedom. That's liberty. Now you don't got to prove anything. Now you don't have to hold a grudge. Now you don't have to be bitter about somebody. Now you don't have to worry about what other people are doing to you and taking revenge and not forgiving and, and doing no, uh uh-uh. My life is in the hands of God. He owns me. He's taking care of me. It's not a popular message today. You read a lot about self-fulfillment. 
Self-realization, self-actualization. That's what you read. That's what society will tell you. Take care of yourself. Look out for number one. Right? That's a lie. That's humanism. That's humanism. God says, give your life to me. Submit yourself to me. Crucify yourself on the cross. That's what it means. To be a follower of Jesus. I. Oh, yeah. If you try to save your life, you'll lose it. Matthew 10, 39. If you give it up for me, you're going to find it. Freedom, liberty, fulfillment comes in giving up. Not holding on to it. Not owning it, but releasing your life to him. Not demanding your own way. That's bondage. John 10, 10, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And that life that he wants you to have, in order to get that, you've got to give up the life of your own. Oh, we'd love to have it both ways, wouldn't we? But there's an exchange that needs to take place. I'm come that you might have life and have it in abundance. Life fulfilled, eternal life. Not, it's when we get to heaven, but there's fulfillment in life today. In fact, your eternal life starts when you get saved. We, you can experience eternal life now, today. That kind of life awaits you. Today, Brother Tim said, is the day of salvation. Why would you want to rule your own life when Jesus can take care of it and do a lot better job than you can? Well, one reason we listen to the world, we think, you know, we're giving up, we're going to lose out. No, when you give up, you win. I know it's con- it sounds uh, uh, contradictory, but that's the gospel. Contrary to our society, isn't it? Death must precede life. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Finding life. Find it is to lose it. Mm. To lose it is to find it. Oh, but I've heard, Pastor, get all the gusto you can out of life. You got to drink this. You got to do this. You got to eat this. <laughs> you know, all kind of formulas and advice out there for getting fulfillment and pleasure in life. But you'll never experience it, that abundant life that Jesus wants to give it until you give up control of your life. Why are many Christians so frustrated? They haven't denied themselves. It's a frustrating experience to call yourself a Christian and live for God, and you haven't denied yourself. Or oh, it's like pulling, like somebody pulling this way and pulling this way, and it feels good for a while and it works for a while, and then, oh, now I'm this way. And, mm, that's when it says just give up. That's surrender, isn't it? Just put both hands up and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Oh, I want to be first. Oh, the scripture says he that wants to be first, he must be last. And the servant of all. Mm. Another way to say it, those who try to gain their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake. Everybody say, for my sake. You can give your life for some other causes. I will just make that interjection in there. There's people that give their life for a lot of things. They sacrifice their life for a lot of things. Hello, speaker. Oh, I think it's all right. It has. But unless you're giving it for God, hear me now, you won't gain the life that you're looking for. Amen. 
The life that you're looking for will evade you until the moment you disown the life that you have. Here's what it means to lose your life. Lose your life. Lose your life. Sounds pretty serious, doesn't it? I want you to kind of think about this and look about this. To destroy, everybody say fully. Oh, man. And that word crucified with him, it literally means to be impaled with. Impaled on a cross. Anybody want to be a Christian? Anybody want to follow Jesus? You know what that means? Let's preach the gospel. Anybody want to hear the gospel? The good news? Give up your life. Hear me loud and hear me clear. You cannot be a disciple of Jesus. Let me just quote the scripture. If any man will come after me. Let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. I hope, I pray, I trust. If you're in the sound of my voice and you call yourself a Christian, you understand you can't live your life your way and follow God. Both. To destroy fully, that means not my will, but your will be done. We said it a while ago. Here it is again. I've been crucified with Christ to impale together. And so, scripturally speaking, what happens when you became a Christian, your life got nailed on the cross. It literally means to be impaled in connection with, in companion with. And so literally, spiritually, you were hung your life on the cross when you come to this altar and you said, Jesus, I want to follow you. It's more than an emotional kind of decision. It is a full-fledged commitment that I do not want my life anymore. I want his life. It may not get the altar full, but that's the invitation that the Bible gives. Any man, hey, you want to follow Jesus? Get on the cross. Because you can't follow him until you've crucified yourself. That's a good place right there to say amen, pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that right, Brother Keith? Isn't that right, Brother Keith? I know. Thank you. To extinguish selfishness. Oh, Lord, can I have a little bit? <laughs> Isn't that way we do? Lord, just uh, uh, I'll give you this much, and I'll give you this, and, and I'll give you this room, and I'll give you this part, but oh, I just can't let go of that yet. Sound like the rich young ruler. I've done all of these things up from my youth. I've done all of them, Lord. Oh, one thing. Everybody say one thing. Do you know one thing can keep you from following Jesus? Hear me now, church. I didn't even notice in my notes. It's just coming out. So I believe it's from God, and you just take it. Amen? To extinguish selfishness. One thing, we need to ask the Lord today. Lord, is there one thing? I mean, I have to give up all my life, Pastor. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. Mm-hmm. And so when he said to him, well, go sell all that you have and give to the poor, he went away sorrowful because he was very rich. And Jesus did not bargain with him. Oh, wait a minute, just, just, just try today. 
Now, here's what we preach. Give a little today. Give a little tomorrow. And it's kind of a stepping stone thing. Don't we do that? We come to Christ and, and, and we yield a little now and yield a little now. And, and I know we're all growing and we're being transformed. And God's dealing with different areas of our life every day. In, in me and, and in you too. But there needs to be that time where you come and say, God, I'm done. It's my life. It's your life. I'm finished with mine. I disowned it, crucified it. It's hard to live if you've been crucified. Isn't it? See? Things. Truly, I say unto you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. And this scripture that this week just jumped out at me. I've read it hundreds of times, just like most of y'all have. But you know what kind of jumped out at me? It's never had before. It remains alone. I always thought about the death. And, of course, it dies. It produces fruit. But if it doesn't die, it, it's alone. Listen to me. It abides alone. Now, God's ever-present everywhere, but if you want the fellowship with God, if you want communion with God, don't be fooled and deceived into thinking you can live your life your way and then just have communion and fellowship on your terms. Unless you die, it remains alone. The rich young ruler went alone. He just didn't go with him because he wasn't willing to die. I guess that's the end. Would you stand with me here, please? This is the call, altar call to God. Tired of being alone? <laughs> Tired of going at your way? Give it up. Lay it down. Jesus says, nobody took my life from me. What did he say? I laid it down. And you know, I can't take your life. I can't. And Jesus ain't going to either. He's not going to pick you up and bring you to this altar. He's not going to violate your, your will. He's not going to violate your freedom. You have the complete freedom to live your life any way you want to. You know what he'll do? He'll meet you right here at the altar. When you say, I give it my life. No man took it from me. No man will take your life from you. But you have the opportunity to lay it down. Father, let's pray this morning, Lord. If there's one here, in the name of Jesus, has the courage to believe the word of God today, Say, Lord, I'm tired of going it alone. I kind of one foot in and one foot out. Trying to make things happen. Some my way, some God's way. Oh, but God understands. Oh, don't be deceived. He does understand, but he also demands. He's Lord. He's the one that died on the cross. He don't bargain with humans. He says, you're going to come on my turn, or are you not coming? But if you love yourself, <laughs> you'll deny yourself. Let's pray together. Let's sing together. And we're going to be here. I'm going to ask the elders to come and other prayer partners. And well, You know, it, he just loves you so much. He loves you so much today. The altar is open for you to come and say, Lord, not my will, but you will. That's, that's the simple gospel message. How do I accept Christ? You give up yourself. I mean, there's no, we say a prayer. You know, there's no sinner's prayer in the Bible. You can't give me a verse in the scripture where there's a sinner prayer. It doesn't mean it's unbiblical. But too many times we substitute those words from an actual act of submission. 
Because we said this words, but have we done that? Action. I'm going to tell you something. Words that you say won't save you. Just, just the mere repetition of something. Unless you're, you've got corresponding action. And that's the denial in the yielding way. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus as we sing this morning. God, that you'd prick our hearts. If there's one here today that needs to make that commitment, will they come? I pray in Jesus' name. No man comes to the Father except the Spirit drawn. But if you feel that Spirit on drawing you today, would you come? Maybe you just want to come and just give him some thanks at the altar today. <laughs> the Lord, I thank you. I love my life. And, and hey, maybe you just want to come and deny yourself. I mean, you're a believer. and just We need to do that. What? Paul said, I die. How often? Daily. Nothing wrong with just coming down and say, Lord, here I am. Woo! Dead or in a doorknob, I pray in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Woo! And if there's something, Lord, trying to, this is the process. Something to kind of come up. No. Sometimes that old, remember those things at the circus where those things pop their head up? And you have to get them a hammer and they've got a big old mallet. And the kids stay. Sometimes that's it. Whoop, nope, not dead. Get down there. Sometimes we just need to come to the altar as believers and say, I, I, Holy Spirit, Kill that in my life. I yield it and take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Would you come this morning in the name of Jesus? Let's sing, brother. Give the Lord opportunity and freedom this morning. Bless you, Jesus. Come to